is Gabby, and I would like to welcome you to the first Spring Drama Showcase of 2021. Tonight, Drama Club students will share Mana Walton poems with you that they have practiced and prepared at home. Usually, these pieces are used for auditions, which are performed in the drama room. But due to the current world, we have decided to make a movie and share it with our friends and families. The video will also include clips of 5th graders sharing how Drama Club has helped them grow and what they have enjoyed about drama and Drama Club at Tikle Wood Elementary School. We hope you enjoy our show! Good evening, my name is Evelyn and I have the pleasure of introducing the monologue segment of the showcase. A monologue is a play written and performed by one person. Monologues are easier than Santa plays because you don't have to know your cue when to talk, but also more challenging because there aren't any other people on stage to help if, actor, if the actor makes a mistake. Monologues can be standalone or part of the play. Tonight monologues are standalone monologues. Monologues can be any length from 30 seconds to two hours. Don't worry, we don't have any two hour monologues. Now, without further ado, the T. Clay Wood Elementary School Drama Club presents Monologues. I know you've played me before, but let me tell you, this is totally different. My father made it. You know my father's an electrician, right? Well, before that, he used to make video games out in California. He made this video game. It's not even for sale yet. He left it right here on the table. You might as well try it. There it is. Ava, I'm going to be performing Busy B. Here I go. Okay, for the last time, my name is not Busy B. Do you really think my parents would name me Busy B? I mean, come on. This is our daughter, Busy B. This is our other daughter, Curious Cat. And this is our wonderful son, Dopey Doggy. It's not Busy B. It's B Z B. I already told you that. My first name is Benziti. It's a combination of my grandfather's name, Ben, and his favorite meal, Ziti. My middle then my middle name is Zutina. My mom's best friend was Tina. And I guess my parents decided to have me while they were at the zoo or something like that. Then my last name is Buchanan. Benziti, Zutina, Buchanan. My dad calls me Benzi and my mom calls me Zuti. But my friends, my true friends, call me B Z B. And I don't have to explain to them every day. Hi, I'm Evelyn Harm. I will be performing This Isn't Easy. The tough thing about always being right is that everybody's always expecting you to be right. I mean, that shouldn't be a problem if you're always right. But I'm just sometimes not 100% sure I'm right. Right? Sometimes you have to make tough decisions and everybody's always counting on you to make the right one and staring. I guess what I'm saying or 
trying to say is that it's not easy being me. Seriously. I'm the fastest in my gym class, so everybody always wants me to pick them for my team. I'm the smartest, so everybody always wants to copy off my paper. The key word is try. And I'm the coolest, so everybody always wants to hang out with me. So I wonder why nobody invited me to the party tonight. I guess everybody just forgot. Weird. It was huge, I swear. The tick was like this big. I didn't even know it was on me. I was watching television and my mom came in, came in with some popcorn. And I ran to her because I knew my brother was going to grab the whole bowl. And when I got to my mom, she said, Sweetie, did you draw a mole on your neck? I was like, you mean a mole? Like a mole that takes it to the ground? And she says, no, I mean like the mole that you... And then she throws the popcorn straight up in the air and screams. Oh my gosh, Darren, Angie has a giant tick on her neck. I was totally freaking out. I was like, where, where? Then she says, just calm down, honey. Calm down? Me calm down? She was like bananas telling me to calm down. Then my dad comes in and he walks right over to me without a word. My mom was like, it's right there on her neck. And, and he looks at her. I know. I can see it. He grabs onto it. He doesn't say a single word to me. Not like, it's okay, honey, or just relax, sweetie. Nothing. He pulls it off, walks into the bathroom, and flushes it down the toilet. My mom and I were just silent. The dog was walking around eating all the popcorn. Mom, like, she just, she gets up, picks the bowl off the floor, and says, I guess I should make some popcorn. Hi, I'm Alyssa, and today I will be performing Late Pass. Okay, let's get into it. Sorry I'm late, Mr. Dove, but I have a really good reason. See, my alarm clock broke and did everything. It was bound to happen sooner or later. Anyways, by the time I got up, my mom had already left for work thinking I was on the bus. She's as blind as a bat with her glasses in the morning. But when I got up and looked at my mom's clock, and eh, I'd already missed the bus. I had to rush and take a shower because my dog drew it all over me in my sleep. But the shower wasn't working, so I had to go outside in my PJs and hose myself down. Then there wasn't any plain clothes, so I had to wear my big brother's overalls. I grabbed my piggy bank, <sighs> lunch money. As I was running to school, I tripped five times on my pants. Then some bullies came running at me. So I picked up my pant legs and ran like the wind. And here I am. I hope I didn't miss the test. Hi, my name is Riley, and I'll be performing the monologue, Color Free. I'm Karen, I'm Karen. Yeah. It worked. What worked? Mr. Bell made us draw a tree in our class today. She drew one for us to copy. It was all green and brown at the bottom, and I thought that was really ugly. Really? So I made my tree pink and blue with pretty purple birds. But when she saw it, she yelled, that's all wrong. There's no such thing as pink trees. What? So I said what she told me to say if she picked on me again. What was that? I said, art is about imagination. You are a bad art teacher if you're trying to stunt up my creativity. All the kids started clapping and she turned bright red. Then she took me to the principal's office and he said I was right and she better fix her attitude or something. Wow. Then he told the class we could use any colors we want. So we all made a big tree with every color of the rainbow and it's for you. Thank you. My name is Emily, and I will be performing the monologue, Chores. I tried. I swear I did. It was totally Beanbag's fault. I know you told me that it can never be the dog's fault, but this time, I think you'll agree. And because Beanbag's technically more of Danny's dog, he's always saying that, right? I just think he should have to help me. Okay, listen. 
I was pulling the trash bin to the curb like you said. Well, actually, Beanbag was pulling it. <laughs> it was really funny. I tied his leash to the... Anyway. We were going down the driveway and this rat. I swear, Mom, it was like this big. Leaps out of the garbage bin and almost lands on Beanbag's back. I screamed and Beanbag went ballistic. Beanbag starts chasing this rat and the stupid thing runs back into the garage. And Beanbag's still tied to the bin, right? So trash is going everywhere. Then Sandra comes out and she's like, what the? I, Beanbag is freaking out. I'm freaking out. Then this rat comes like right at her. I didn't even know Sandra was that athletic. If Mrs. Jackson had seen her, she definitely would not have gotten cut from cheerleading. She leaps up and hangs from the shelf where all the paint is. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. And of course the shelf broke. She's like 100 pounds and she's hanging from it. And that's where all the paint came from. Then Beanbag runs the trash bin right into Dad's truck. That's where the scratch came from. It was, I was totally crazy, mom. Totally scary. Sandra's still like crying upstairs. I put Beanbag in her crate. I can't go back into the garage, mom, ever. I was just waiting for Danny to get home so he could, we're gonna eat soon. Thank you. My name is Olivia, and this is Cereal Teeth. Dad, you ate all the cereal again. Mom bought the cereal for me. Look, see, it says, for kids. You're supposed to eat your gross grown-up food for breakfast. Oh, no, you messed up the puzzles on the back. The bear has to go through the maze. He can't go around it. And a bear's favorite thing is a football. It's honey, Dad. <sighs> Mom! Seriously, guys, I think it's called Bigfoot. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. First, I was walking beside the bridge. Well, actually, I was on the bridge at first. And I saw this bee. Anyways, then I saw this big black snake. I screamed, and I realized it was a stick, but I swear it looked like a snake. So I climbed up the wire, and there it was. There he was. A huge, hairy, hairy face and a big hunchback. I, at first, I thought it was this big, weird guy, but then it opened its mouth and it had a huge, scary teeth. I ran as fast as I could to get out of there. It was, I was, have you guys seen anything like that before? Oh, oh, here, hey, come here. I want to go first. Please, Mr. Knight, can you hear me? Go first. Hey, come on. What do I got to do to get noticed around here? <sighs> Pick me, not Nick. All he's going to do is get sick. Well, all he does is barf, barf, barf. <clears throat> okay. I'm being quiet. See? I'm quiet. Hey, Miss Jenner, I'm being really quiet. Look how quiet I am. I'm just, I am quiet as like a mouse. Actually, quieter than a mouse because my squeak. So I'm quiet like a butt. They don't talk at all. Hey, Miss Jenner, you look really pretty. I like your dress. And I like your hair. It looks just like my mom's. Black, I mean brown and gray. So can I go, please? Wow, I can? Yes, go. Cool. Hey, what were you gonna do again? Hi, my name is Charlie, and today I'm going to be performing pet assignment. This assignment seems so simple, but it's taking me forever. How hard can it be trying to find a story about one of your pets? They're always doing funny things, but I can't think of anything they actually do. I went to go watch my hamster for like an hour or two to see if they would do anything funny, but I just wanted to sleep. I said, come on, Bozo, run in that squiggly wheel all night long and now I'm counting on you and you just sleep. I put him on the floor just and he just looked around like I think he's afraid of Daphne. 
Daphne is another one. This cat is the funniest animal ever. She's hysterical, hilarious, but I can't think of anything she actually does. She was staring at the window, so I snuck outside, crawled up the window, and she just stared at me like she was sucked or something. I said, come on. I think they all know I have an assignment, and they're all pretending their brain is dead. Then Trouser. Trouser is the most disappointing of all. This, this dog is hysterical, usually. But today she wanted to get off the couch. I gave, I threw her her squeakily pig toy. I even gave her a biscuit. I even asked her, asked her if she wanted to go to the P-A-R-K. But I actually said park though. We only spell it one, never mind. Anyway, everyone else is going to have such funny assignment stories. And my stupid pets are just, ugh, I'm so bummed. Hi, I'm Landon, and this is It Isn't Easy. The trouble with always being right is people are always expecting you to be right. Which really shouldn't matter if you're always right, but sometimes you just can't be 100% sure you're right. Right? There are a lot of tough decisions you have to make, and when a lot of people are counting on you, staring at you, I guess what I'm saying is, or trying to say is, it isn't easy being me. Seriously. I'm the fastest person in my gym class, so everybody's trying to pick me for their team. I'm also the smartest, so everybody's trying to copy my homework. The key word is trying. I'm also the coolest. Well, I shouldn't say that. People think I'm the coolest, so they're always trying to hang around me. I'm also the leader. I have the answer to every question. So don't you think it's weird that nobody told me where the party is tonight? Everybody must have just forgotten. So weird. Hi, my name is Elise and I'll be doing the monologue of Snowballs. Everybody's throwing them. Evelyn, Sasha, and Brian. I even think Tony threw them, but he'd never admit it because his father would grind them for the rest of his life. I only threw one snowball. Honest, one. What were the chances that Miss Cordero would come around the corner? We thought that it was Kyle Schaefer. I know we're not supposed to pick on Kyle, but Kyle hit Evelyn in the face with a snowball yesterday. We wanted to get him back. We thought Miss Cordero was Kyle. I mean, why does he have the same coat and hat as Miss Cordero? Seriously, he's a kid and she's an old lady. Anyways, it was an honest mistake. Honestly, and I swear, I never meant it to, to scare her little Poochie Lou. Hi, I'm Sonic and I'm doing favorite part. I can't decide how I should say this line. Listen, I can see. Or do you think it sounds better like this? I can see. Did you hear the difference? See, we're trapped in a mind for like days and we finally get out. But I can't decide if I'm proud like I can see. Or really relieved but kind of tired and weak. I can see. Is that too dramatic? I can see. Or I could be really excited, like, I can see, lights, food, water, play clouds, right? Or I could be sort of frustrated, like, like maybe another miner said, hey, look, there's a light. And I would say, I know, I can see, it's tough. These three replays are so challenging. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm going to be performing Calling Mom. I hope you enjoy. Yes, hello? May I speak to Maggie? Maggie Richards? I'm sorry. No, I'm her daughter. <laughs> yes, I am. My name is T Tiffany Richards. Who is this? Well, Mrs. Van Winkle, I would really appreciate it if I could just speak to my mother. Of course she's there. She works there. You want me to describe my mother? 
Miss Van Winkle, are you new or something? <sighs> okay, okay. My mother has blonde hair, brown eyes, she's short, and she has a blue jacket. Yes, she's sort of pretty. Okay, she's really pretty and sweet, yes. Mom! Why do you do that every time I call? Thank you. Hi, my name is Alexis, and I'm going to be performing Lost, I Think. Here's what's going to happen if we go left. That's west, I think. If we go left, we'll come to Maynard's Creek. Can anyone hear it? There's probably no water in it anyways. So if Maynard Creek is over there, that means straight ahead of us should be Gilly's Cove. Ever been there? They call it that because Gilly McDonald, that's Billy McDonald's grandfather, saved two boys from drowning down there. I think that's what it was. Or he saved them for a bear. Anyways, cool place. So if that's straight ahead, then if we go right, then we'll go through Eden's Meadow, go over Carpenter's Ridge, and come back to the cabins. Problem is, there's over 50 cabins out here. Like 51, I think. My father told me to never stay in cabin 51. Because old lady Hutch's ghost is in there. I asked him why she's there, and he said he reckoned that she only wanted them to build 50 cabins. I think that's a stupid reason to haunt a place. Anyways, that's all our options. I can't think of anything else. Oh, or we could call my dad and ask him if we want. Hi, I'm Gabby. Um, I'm one of the drama club members and I've been doing this for a year or two now. Um, I moved here last year and I have had so much fun doing drama club. Even though I didn't always get the part that I wanted, I still realized that it was every part that made it special because even if you didn't get a big part, it's a small part that adds those tiny little details that makes the play come together. And I've learned that it's the hard work that makes it fun because you get to meet so many new people and there's so many like cool people you can meet in Drama Club and it's been really fun. So yeah, that's what I've taken from Drama Club. Bye. I have seen my dad put together all the plays since the circus ballerina in kindergarten. And when I started fourth grade, I was so excited to join drama club. And now that I'm in it, I have made so many friends, gotten to know people I never would have known before, and deepened relationships. So drama has helped me be more social and meet new people. Hi, I'm Ava. This is my first year in drama club. I am very excited for drama this year. I did a play about biomes in third grade and I started to fall in love with drama. I am so excited for all the fun things we're gonna do this year, and so excited that drama has taught me how to speak in front of large audiences. I am very excited for this year. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Emily. Being in drama club has helped me get over my stage fright, and I have enjoyed participating in drama club since the second grade. Thank you, Mr. Dove, for all your help. Hi, my name is Jasmine Williams. Drama's helped me a lot. It helped me with public speaking and also to communicate better with others. Hi, I'm Evelyn, and drama has helped me grow by letting me express all my talent. The most exciting thing is that I can make new friends in a pandemic. Drama rocks. Hi, my name is Alexis, and how Drama at T-Play, what has helped me um, with my everyday life is that it helps me memorize like my states, my presidents, because I have to memorize my drama lines. And also, it's just really helped me to be more loud with my voice and project more so that other people can hear me like during my speeches for class and a bunch of other things. And it's just really helped me go really far with 
my grades and everything, and I have a joke for you. Why does everyone always say to break a leg to actors? Because they always have a cast. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Alexis, and I have the privilege of introducing the poetry segment in this showcase. This is a fun and silly segment featuring the poetry of Shel Silverstein. Cast members who choose poems have added a challenge in their performance. They have to memorize the poem word for word. That's because poems have a flow created to them by each word. If a word is missed, then the poem doesn't have the melodic flow known as meter. After memorizing the poems, they practice for many hours while adding actions. We hope you enjoy these exciting poems. Hi, my name is Natalia and I will be doing a poem called Medusa. I hope you enjoy. Coil and hiss, writhe and twist. My hair won't get done because one hair says in ponytail. And one yells, simple bun. One whispers, car grows. One screams, bangs. One shouts, just wash it and dry it. One snaps, no, curl it and tie it. One hollers, just bleach it and dye it. And how am I to fix my hair if my hair won't keep quiet? Thank you. I'm Emily Burgett, and I'm doing the poem Sick. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry, I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks, I counted 16 chicken pox, and there's one more that's 17. Don't you think my face is green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue, it might be instamatic flu. I cough <coughs> and sneeze and poo and gasp and choke. I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin, my belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankle sprained, my appendix pains. Each time it rains, my nose is cold, my toes are numb, my neck is stiff, my voice is weak, I hardly whisper when I speak, my tongue is filling up my mouth, I think my hair is falling out, my elbow's bent, my spine ain't straight, my, t my temperature is 108, my brain is shrunk, I cannot hear. There's a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail. My heart is what? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye. I'm going to play. Hi, I'm Grace Stafford, and this is the poem, My Robot. I told my robot to do my bidding. He yawned and said, you must be kidding. I told my robot to cook me a stew. He said, I got better things to do. I told my robot to sweep my shack. He said, you want me to strain my back? I told my robot to answer the phone. He said, I must make some calls of my own. I told my robot to brew me some tea. He said, why don't you make tea for me? I told my robot to boil me an egg. He said, first, let me hear you beg. Told my robot there's a song you can play me. He said, how much are you going to pay me? So I sold my robot because I never knew exactly who belonged to who. Hi, my name is Kalia and this is Rock and Roll Band. If we were in a rock and roll band, we'd travel all over the land. We'd play, we'd sing, and we'd wear stingy things. If we were in a rock and roll band, if we were in a rock and roll band. And we're up there on the stands, the people hear us and love us and cheer us. Hurry for that rock and roll band. If we were in a rock and roll band, we'd have millions of fans. We'd giggle and laugh and sign our graphs. If we were in a rock and roll band, if we were in a rock and roll band, the people would all kiss our hands. We'd be millionaires and have extra long hair. If we were in a rock and roll band, but we ain't in the rock and roll band. Just
picture seven kids in the sand with homemade guitars, pails, and jars, and drums of potato chip cans. Just seven in the just seven kids in the sand, talking and waving our hands. And dreaming and thinking, oh, wouldn't it be grand if we were in a rock and roll band? Thank you. My mom's here doing the toad and the kangaroo. Said the toad to the kangaroo, I can hop and so can you. So if we marry, you will have a child who can jump a mountain or hop a mile. And we can call it a toadaroo, said the hopeful toad to the kangaroo. Said the kangaroo, my dear, what a perfectly lovely idea. I would most gladly marry you. But as for having a toadaroo, I'd rather call I'd rather we call it a kang uh, road, said the kangaroo to the frowning toad. So they argued but couldn't agree on Ranga too or kangaroo. And finally the toad said, I don't give a dang if it's a ruda code or a tanga kang. I really don't feel like marrying you. Fine with me, said the kangaroo. And the toad had no more to say. And the kangaroo just hopped away. And they never married or had a child that could jump a mountain or hop a mile. What a loss. What a shame. I just, just because they couldn't agree on one name. Bye. Miles and I'm going to be reading Captain Hook. Captain Hook must remember not to scratch his toes. Captain Hook must remember not to pick his nose. Captain Hook must be gentle when he shakes your hand. Captain Hook must be careful opening starting cans, playing tag and pouring tea in open pages of his book. Lots of folks I'm glad I ain't, but mostly Captain Hook. Hi, I'm Payton. I'll be performing Complain and Jack. This morning, my old Jack in the Box popped out wanting to sack in the box. He cried, hey, there's a tack in the box, and it's cutting me through and through. There was also a crack in the box, and I'll never find a snack in the box. And sometimes I hear a crack in the box because the duck lives in there, too. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm going to be doing the Twistable Turnable Man. He's a twistable, turnable, squeezable, pullable, stretchable, foldable man. He can crawl into your pocket or fit into your locket. Oh, or screw himself into a 20 volt socket. He can stretch himself up to the steeple or taller. Or squeeze himself into a thimble or smaller. Yes, he can. Of course he can. He's a twistable, turnable, squeezable, pullable, stretchable, shrinkable man. He lives a passable life with with his squeezable, lovable, kissable, huggable, pullable, tuggable wife. And they have two twistable kids that bend up as the way that they did. And they turn and they stretch just as much as they can. For, for this bendable, foldable, do what you're toldable, easily moldable, buy what you're soldable. Washable, mendable, highly dependable, viable, saleable, always available, bounceable, shakeable, almost unbreakable, twistable, turnable man. I am Rachel, and I'm going to be doing the poem No Blood Flaw. No grown ups allowed. Quit playing with toys if you don't need. Be careful with your don'ts. No grown ups allowed. Perform in a club and the secret oath must not be shown. Shh. No grown ups allowed. We're going out for pizza. No, no one but me and my crowd. So just stay away. Oh, now it's time to pay? Grunt Flog. My name is Soliana and my poem is Ball Constrictor. Oh, Ball Constrictor, oh, Ball Constrictor. I'm being eaten by a Ball Constrictor. Oh, what do you know? It's nibbling my toe. Oh gee, it's up to my knee. Oh my, it's up to my thigh. Oh fiddle, it's up to my middle. Oh wreck, it's up to my neck. Oh dread, it's... Hello, I'm Connor and I am doing the poem Medusa. 
coil and hiss, writhe and twist. My hair do monkey dunk as one hair's hissing, ponytail and one yell simple bun. One whispers cornrows, one screams bangs, one shouts just wash it and dry it, one snaps no curl and tie it, one hollers just bleach and dye it, and how am I to fix my hair if my hair will not keep quiet? Hello my hello, my name is uh Graden Gra Be you are Doing it, peanut person. 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 Doing it. The Giving Tree, performed by Bailey Dove. There once was a tree, and she loved the little boy. Each day the boy would come, gather her leaves, make them into crowns, and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk, swing from her branches, and eat apples. They'd play hide and go seek, and when he was tired, he'd sleep in her shade. The boy loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. But as time went on, the boy grew older, and the tree was often alone. And then one day the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy. She said, come boy, come climb up my trunk, swing from my branches and eat apples. The boy said, I'm too big to climb in place, said the boy. I wanna buy things and have fun. I want money. I'm sorry, said the tree, I have no money, only my apples and leaves. Here boy, take my apples. You can sell them in the city and then you will be happy. So the boy climbed up her trunk, gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy, but the boy stayed away for a long time after that and the tree was sad. And then when he came back, the tree was so excited she could hardly speak. She said, come boy, come climb up my trunk, sing from my branches. And the boy said, I'm too busy and tired to climb in place. So the boy, I want a house to keep me warm. I want a wife and I want kids, so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I'm sorry, said the tree. I have no house. The forest is my home. Here, here, said the tree, take my branches. Then you can build a house and then you'll be happy. So the boy climbed up the tree, cut down her branches and carried them away. And the tree was happy, but the boy stayed away for a long time. And then one day when he came back, the tree said, come boy, come play. And the boy said, I'm too tired and sad to play. So the boy, I want a boat that'll take me far from here. Can you give me a boat? Here, said the tree, take my trunk. Then you can make a boat and then you'll be happy. So the boy cut down her trunk, made a boat, and then sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. The boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree said, I'm sorry, boy, I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak to eat apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, you cannot swing. I'm too tired to swing, said the boy. My trunk is gone, you cannot climb. I'm too big to climb, said the boy. 
I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I have not I wish I could give you something, but I have nothing. I'm just an old stump. I don't want much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. A quiet stump is the perfect place to sit and rest. Come, boy, come sit. The boy did as he was told, and the tree was happy. Good evening. My name is Emily, and on behalf of the entire Spring Drama Club, we, I would like to thank you for joining us tonight. Your support means so much to all of us. We have a love for drama and are so excited that we were able to share it with you tonight. We also want to thank our families for supporting us through this process. Thank you for your support, taking time to practice, and helping us prepare for this showcase. Your love and support means the world. Looking ahead, we are going to start practicing for our spring play starting on Monday. Uh, the online performance will be on May 14th at 7 p.m. We hope you can join us as we perform a play titled, A Tale of the Two Cows. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed our show. And if you see a drama club member, take, some, take a moment to congratulate them on a job well done. Have a great evening.